Hello and welcome to a bit of sunshine. So I've had my second lesson and I've had a practice and it wasn't too bad. Some bad in it, some good. So now I've got to take it to the course, but rather than talking about what I'm doing, let's talk about the holes and how I would like to play them rather than how I am playing them. You never know, the two might coincide and I might have a decent round. So, I shall uh, leave it to the voiceover that talk about the holes. Well, while I'm describing where I'd like to go, how I'd like to play the course, let's have some fun with the short game as well. So down the right, and we use the slope to get some extra yards. But that's just a low tug. And when I'm this far back, then I'm definitely favouring the right hand side because the left is completely dead. So I'm going over the right hand bunker, but I've caught that a little bit skanky. So it's low and right and short. And this is what I mean. I've had some comments at the club from people I've played with and on the channel about my short game. So let's see how many shots I can actually save off my rubbish play. And here's my first opportunity. One of the great things about this golf course is it will accommodate a draw, a straight shot or a fade. Yeah, there, there are perhaps two tee shots where a draw is preferred, but it's not actually required. You can still go ahead and hit your fade. So you hit any shape you like here and it fits the golf course. There's none of these constant dog leg lefts that us slicers hate. So the second has three fairway bunkers. So my choice is to aim at the left hand one and hit a little fade. Well that was more of a block. And I'm glad the ground is soft. When it firms up I'm going to start losing balls off tee shots like that. Now it slopes down to this green, but I've always fancied landing the ball on the green rather than running it in. But I suppose if you're a long way back, you can run it into the green. Now lagging is one of my skills and I'm not entirely sure where it comes from, but it does not save you a lot of shots when you've got 15, 20 yards or more if you can do this. So that's another shot saved. At the third, you've got two options here. Land it short the bunker and chip it over if you're a high handicapper. If you're a little bit lower, then you really got to put it on. Now I thought I'd pulled this left, but after my lesson, there isn't really enough computing power left over for me to aim where I want to go. And yet another lag opportunity where it would be very easy to three jab this if you can't lag it. I mean look how many paces I'm taking to get to the flag. Four is the dog leg left over two ponds and these trees. Now when I'm feeling really on it I'll try and hit a draw. When I'm not I'm going to try and just sneak over the corner with a little fade. But that's another drive left out to the right. Now there's two very deep fairway bunkers. Uh, sorry, not fairway bunkers, greenside bunkers. So there's no excuse really for not going for the fat of the green. So I'm trying for the fat of the green. But the lie won't permit me and I end up in the right hand bunker, which is GUR. But because I was right up the face, my nearest point of relief was to the right as opposed to dropping back and chipping over. So if you've got bunkers which are GUR because they're full of water after all this rain, just look to see where your ball is actually lying and what your nearest point of relief is. And yet another opportunity to save a shot.
five is just a layup to my favourite yardage. Now you're going to have to listen for the bounce off the tree. <laughs> yep, it came all the way back. Oh, brother. Now there's nowhere to run into this green either. We've got two ponds to go over. So you've got no choice, but you've got to fly it on. And that's one of them ugly wedges, short, right. But at least it's over. Now one mistake I see an awful lot of is tidying up where people just walk up to the ball and hit it. Even though I know this, and it is only two foot six, I give it all the time in the world. And this is how you save shots. Well, six is the dog leg to the right. From this forward tee, I try and hit a fade. I try and hit the shape of the hole. When it's back on the competition tee, I generally go for a draw instead. Or just hitting it straight. Now there's two nasty bunkers right and there is a new pond left. And I didn't fancy it so I thought I'm going to lay up and just chip over everything. And then I got a flyer out the first cut and we made it anyway. That's one hell of a long five iron for an old man like me. So my first eagle chance on this hole. Yeah, I think you needed to hit that a little harder, Simon. Another dog leg to the right. I wonder why I learnt to hit a fade round this golf course. But as the tee box is a very long way forward today, I'm just going three wood. And that's a lovely double cross. Wonderful. So I get stuck behind a little tree. So it's the chip and run with a seven iron. Eighth tee, pond in the middle of the fairway. I'm going to go down that strip of fairway to the left of the pond. That's a little shove, but it makes it. Well, that was the worst drive because it didn't use the middle. At least the others, even though they're offline, use the middle. And I just made it. But one thing is certain. You'll never see me hitting driver in a competition from the white tees. I just can't guarantee to miss this damn thing. And if you can't guarantee to miss it, then you have to lay up. Let's have a look at it. So 220 ball below the feet. I'm going to aim at the left hand bunker and just let it fade because of the slope of the ground. I'm aiming too far left. And I'm grateful I've seen that now because on the golf course I was a little confused as to how it managed to get that far left. And of course I didn't fade it an inch. So can the short game save me this time?
Well, it would be a simple putt for par, but that bit of shadow over the hole is a little annoying. I'm not very good with that. Never have been. The line is back on the original tee box. Now you can use the slope to get the ball onto the green. I prefer to fly it on. And perhaps I would have actually managed it if I'd got all of the ball. That was a bit toey. So I'm short. I'm chipping. Can we get it up and down again? Now we're looking back towards the tee. You can see what I mean about the slope. Could have used a bit of that. Right, that's the hard nine done. Especially from the competition tees. The thing at Gloucester here is the white tees aren't just 10 yards behind the yellows. Some of them are 40 yards back. And it makes a huge, huge difference. You know, if you're used to hitting driver 8 iron on a hole, all of a sudden you're being asked to hit driver 4 iron. And that can really hurt your score. The holes that it makes a real difference on is the first, the second, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth. Not so much on the ninth, especially from that new tee box. But on eight, you know, I'm, I'm hitting somewhere down my bag. I'm not taking driver, I'm not giving myself that birdie chance. The birdie's got to come from a very good wedge or a very good nine iron. But that's not to say that the back nine can't eat you alive. It certainly can. Well, when the course fully dries out, I'll probably be hitting a three wood off here and going with a draw. At the moment, it's driver and a fate. And even though the fairway slopes left to right, you do want to get down the right because then you get onto a slightly flatter part of the fairway which makes it considerably easier to fly on this green there isn't really anywhere to lay up there isn't enough space so you gotta try and fly it on well, it was a bit fat so it's short and we get another chance to show off our lagging skills What I haven't mentioned before is that there is a pond about three quarters of the way up this hill. It's not very big, but it does catch an awful lot of skanky tee shots. This hole plays 20 yards longer than its length, and from the competition tee, 30 yards longer. Bit of a nasty chip. I haven't actually included this one in Shot Saved, because it was such a poor chip I finished on the high side and you don't ever want to finish on the high side because your ring is going half crown sixpence putting it down the hill well with the out of bounds the course boundary just on that line of trees then here you got to aim inland quite a bit Glad I don't draw the ball because then I'd have to tee up on the other side and aim at the outer bounds. Wonder why I learnt to fade the ball. Flag is on the right upper tier. Let's see if we can find it. Not a lot I can say about 13 other than there is a bunker left, out of bounds left and a grass bunker to the right. So it's quite simply hit a straight shot. 
that's a little shy. I've brought my putter, but I don't think I need it. <laughs> Number 14 is really the last big challenge. Although there are others, obviously you can make a mess of any hole, so... But this is the last real big challenge. I've somehow got to get this from the 14th tee to the 15th tee without making a mess of it. And I'll talk you through it as I attempt to do it. I'm going to spank the ladyboy. Par 5, and this is my choice. Well, out of bounds is basically that line of trees. If you miss the fairway left, you're down a steep bank into thick rough. Now it's easy for me to hit hybrid from the yellow tee. But when you go back under the white, I'm reaching for a three wood and it gets that bit more difficult. Well that's the first shot. We got it on the flat of the fairway. First two hazards avoided. So there's my ball. And that's the line of the outer bounds. It's not very far away. And the other edge of the fairway isn't very far away either. Although the rust's been cut, it is still nasty down this bank. If you take a driver and miss it left, you quite simply you can't get over those damn trees. So that's why I lay it back. I have got on this green in two. But that was when I was young and stupid. 260 yards, just gonna hit one of my long irons. That's not very pretty, that's hard left. Oh dear. Well, I've made worse mistakes here. I've got 96 out of this stuff and it's sat down. There's two front bunkers. So you just have to take those off the playing field. The green is very long. So you just got to get them, get them out of play. I'm taking a nine. That came out a lot better than I thought, and it's probably gone long. But you don't want them bunkers, you've got to take them off the playing field. So you can see what I mean about taking these bunkers out of play. There is so much green here. Even if the flag's on the front, I'm ignoring it, and I'm getting it into the heart of the green. You can two putt, but you can't two putt from a bunker. And if you can get that out of 14 by playing carefully and moving your chess piece about the board, what more do you want? There's two new bunkers in the right rough, but I'm not worried about those. What I'm worried about is the green that slopes right to left. If you're coming in from the right, then you've got to go over that bunker onto a downslope. So left to centre is my favourite bit. And this is absolutely perfect. And that is absolutely crap. Now the shot I choose here is a 9-iron and the idea is to bounce it before this lump. It goes over the lump and then trickles onto the green. Unless of course you chuff it and don't hit it hard enough. I've got the putter again. Yeah, don't need it. Well, I've described this hole before and it hasn't changed. The green slope's left to right. The prevailing wind is left to right. So you go left of the flag and try and spin it down to the hole. 
All I've done is hit it straight. But at 97 yards, if this tee gets any further forward, I'm going to have to start drinking Bud Light. And it's nice to see that the divot boxes are out. Well, the last thing I do before I leave this green is look at the 17th. I want to know where the flag is because that can dictate what club I take off the tee. I also want to feel the wind because when we walk back down there to the 17th tee, you won't feel it. You need to feel what it's doing out here. It's back left and there's no wind. So just to show that you don't have to hit a three wood or a driver over all of the out of bounds, I'm going with a six iron for a change. Now if the wind was hard off the left as normal, then I might choose something else. Ball, tee peg, turf. Wasn't doing that last week, was I? And of course, while I'm showing you that there's a different way to play this hole, I choose this moment to hit one of my poor wedges and another long lag. Unfortunately this time it's a brain fart. Where did that come from? Yeah, but it just shows how long lagging is a very important part of our game. And if you get it wrong it. you're making bogeys. Number 18 the ground isn't hard enough yet to get to the bottom of the hill. But I'm always looking to be a little left of centre. If you get it left of centre, it will run to the bottom in the summer. That's a good drive. And then coming down the steep hill, We've always got a club down, so I'm trying a wedge. We'll find out, will a wedge get to the back of the green? And the answer is no.